Now, there is a small scale study, but nevertheless, in concept, it shows that there is a variation in terms of the concentration of type 1 and type 2 5 alpha reductase in the scalp of men and women. In the study titled, quote, different levels of 5 alpha reductase type 1 and type 2 aromatase and androgen receptor in hair follicles of women and men with androgenetic alopecia, unquote, by Sawaya and Pride. This study undertaken by Sawaya and Pride delves into the intricate differences in enzyme and receptor levels within hair follicles of men and women suffering from androgenetic alopecia, specifically the research targeting the androgen receptor, as well as type 1 and type 2 5-alpha reductase and the cytochrome P450 aromatase enzyme using scalp biopsies from 12 women and 12 men, all aged between 18 and 33, who displayed signs of androgenetic alopecia. One of the most pivotal findings in this particular study was that in both genders, when it came to androgenetic alopecia, there existed higher concentrations of androgen receptors and 5-alpha reductase type 1 and type 2 in frontal hair follicles, typically the thinning areas, than in the occipital follicles, usually the unaffected area. So those are like the sides of the head. Conversely, the occipital follicles of both men and women displayed elevated levels of aromatase. So again, like I've said in other videos, if you look at the donor area, usually, you know, the sides of the head, the occipital lobe, those areas are typically unaffected by dihydrotestosterone or they're more resistant to DHT. And in this particular study, as well as many others, but I'm going to focus on this one right now, it finds that in that particular donor region, there's less 5-alpha reductase activity, there are fewer androgen receptors, and there's an elevated level of aromatase. So this is like really, really interesting stuff here. I wish that the study was expanded to have a higher population count with, you know, more control groups and such. That would definitely solidify this study, and I can see this in concept excellently with a bigger population size. The study also revealed significant quantitative variances in the levels of androgen receptors in the trio of enzymes, predominantly in the outer root sheath of the hair follicles across genders. For instance, female frontal hair follicles contained approximately 40% fewer androgen receptors than their male counterparts. Furthermore, the cytochrome P450 aromatase content in the frontal follicles of women was a staggering six times higher than in men. But again, getting back to the sort of variance in 5-alpha reductase, different variations of the enzyme types in the scalp, it appeared that in the hairline regions, like I mentioned before, that there's a greater concentration of type 1 5-alpha reductase than there is type 2. And we can see, just again in concept, right, maybe some people have more type 1 5-alpha reductase in their scalp and in their hair follicles. Maybe they have greater type 2. In any case, if, let's say like these are the cases, right? Let's say that there are people who have greater type 1 or more type 2 5 alpha reductase enzyme in the scalp and hair follicles. It would stand to reason, at least for me, right? Even though finasteride is good in a majority of cases, if you want to block more of that type 2, and if you want to completely reduce that type 1, then using a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor, particularly like dutasteride, can accomplish that goal of yours and could be more efficacious in the long run when it comes to just decreasing and suppressing scalp DHT.